Hi everyone, I am Lauren Rogers. I am here with Dr. Donna Miller, psychologist uh, with the Office of Mental Health Ministry, which is part of Compassion, Peace and Justice. She is associate for the Mental Health Ministry, and we're here to talk about her work and the work of the church. So Donna, how did this ministry get started and what is your role in it? So um, mental health ministry, the way it is now, really came into being uh, um, through an action at the 2018 General Assembly um, by a very huge margin. Um, they passed a mental health initiative. It was a two-year ini initiative that basically called for some foundation pieces to be put into place that could help spur the growth and the development of mental health ministry across the denomination. Mm -hmm. um, and um, those pieces included a grant program. Um, they also included a survey a uh, churchwide survey that would really look at the status of mental health ministry at that point in time and see um, what was already happening, what needed to happen, um, what kinds of resourcing was needed. Mm -hmm. um, it also called for the start of a new churchwide mental health network that could then um, be a point of connection and support for um, individuals and congregations and presbyteries um, that get involved in mental health ministry. Um, so that's, that's really um, my role. Um, it was, um, there was a, a, essentially it's a two year, was a, originally intended to be a two year initiative. Mm -hmm. And I was hired to basically get these sort of foundation pieces up in place and running and then um, do resourcing. Um, oh, that's amazing. Well, we are so glad that you're here. Uh, you mentioned grants as part of the, the, the program. What kind of grant work is taking place across the country? Um, what, what programs are you supporting through this ministry? Right, we have some really exciting programs. Um, there are 21 projects um, some of them are, have been up and running for nearly a year. Others are just coming into line. Um, two that really stand out that I'm very excited about. Um, one was undertaken by um, a seminary, Pittsburgh Seminary. Um, in the survey, one of the things we learned is that 70% of ministers who responded, and nearly 4,000 ministers responded, 70% um, of them said it would be incredibly helpful to have more training um, yeah. around responding to mental health needs that arise in ministry. 70%? Of yeah. those who responded, wow. 70% of those who responded thought it would be helpful to have more training in this area. Um, and this seminary, the Pittsburgh Seminary, applied for one of our first mental health grants, and it's piloting a continuing education curriculum that's geared to ministers and other church leaders who are involved in pastoral ministry. Um, awesome. Yeah, it's very exciting. Um, and they actually, in their first pilot, you know, opened it up. It's called Hope and Healing. Mm -hmm. uh, they opened it up and they had twice as many people applied to be in it as they actually had space. Oh, gosh. <laughs> That's very exciting. It is very oriented around um, mental health first aid skills um, okay. development also theology around mental health ministry, also differentiating how to differentiate spiritual from mental health issues and needs. And, okay. and, um, and then how to, especially for people who are, their, their original thought was, especially for people in rural settings, how to develop your own kind of referral network 
and learn how to do good referrals so that you can help people get the kind of um, services and care that they might need. Oh, wow. That's wonderful. Yeah, so that's one of the projects. We have another project. Um, we actually have five projects right now that are getting underway that are focusing on mental health needs in communities of color. Okay. Uh, and we have a project that's just getting started um, in Decatur, Georgia, um, a congregation there, Oakhurst. It's an intercultural congregation. And they are going to um, essentially provide a, a sort of virtual pilot, a virtual program of grief support groups. And they're thinking in terms of um, processing the grief of injustice. Um, because members of that congregation have been very disproportionately affected by both COVID and um, the sy systemic racism. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a very, I think it's a very exciting project um, to see how they're going to um, address these, address these needs. Yeah. So, I mean, you just mentioned it, COVID and systemic racism. These are dual pandemics that we are going through right now. Um, I imagine when you came into this ministry that, that this was not, so much on your radar. Um, I imagine that you had kind of other priorities that you were thinking about, but how has the past year uh, changed the, the work of the ministry? What have you seen taking place? Well, um, th there's been a huge shift. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would say initially, um, the first, the first um, part of my job up until last February was really very focused on both raising awareness about the existence of the mental health initiative and mm -hmm. raising around mental health and also getting those pieces into place, the grant program, the survey, the, um, the get, helping to get the network started, working with grassroots leaders on that. So that was really the initial focus. But um, what's happened since then is that it's, there's really no need to raise awareness about mental health at this point. Everyone is really thinking about mental health, yeah. interested in mental health, recognizes the impact. Um, and it's much more focused now on resourcing. Okay. So one of the areas that I worked on um, was really we had an original collection of resources for mental health ministry on our website, but we now have two additional collections, one that's focused on mental health and COVID. Mm -hmm. And there's groups of resources that are in different categories. For example, um, for families, children, young people, also um, for um, clergy, and church leaders that are working with congregations, um, also topics around um, specific issues. Okay. To do with mental health. We also um, have a new collection now that I worked with colleagues to get their input and suggestions that, um, that looks at the intersection of mental health and race. Um, and so there are resources there to do with racial trauma and also um, way, uh, access to resources for, that are culturally appropriate and adapted to particular communities. So um, there are links um, to resources that um, talk about how to access things that are culturally, culturally appropriate, um, language-wise, um, and, and in other ways. So okay. That's wonderful. Yeah. And so, and so why do you believe that it's important that the Presbyterian Church USA care so much about mental health? When I think about, um, there's two ways I think about that. Um, I think 
one way is theological. Um, and, you know, right now a lot of churches are looking at Matthew 25. Mm -hmm. um, and I think in Matthew 25, and also in other places, um, Jesus is constantly kind of confronting the tendency that we have to um, rank and sort people into categories and groups and mm -hmm. systems. systems that lift, you know, elevate some people and really um, diminish others and often um, result in marginalization, stigma, um, and um, really kind of deny that we are all equally loved and precious. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think, you know, one of the ways we talk a lot about that, ha that that's happening, that we're looking at and more aware of now is race. Right. But that state is, is another way that happens. And historically, there's been tremendous, I mean, stigma has improved, but it's still very, very present around issues like mental health. So I think, so I think, you know, if we're thinking about what Jesus has to say, um, there's, there's very good reason to be involved in mental health ministry um, Absolutely. in that respect. But there's another reason, and it's very practical and very sort of pragmatic. And that is because um, churches have tremendous potential to make a difference. Um, in terms of the impact of mental health, we know that one out of every five of us will have a diagnosable mental health condition in any given year. Oh, wow. Um, and that is now, has now increased. Right. Um, so, um, but in addition, over our lifetimes, um, we have around a 50% chance of having some kind of mental health concern or mental health issue. So there are lots of us inside and outside the church. Um, we also know that relationships are one of the key factors in um, mental health, that they are basically essential to mental wellness throughout our lives, mm -hmm. that they um, are a place that we process difficult or traumatic experiences, and they're protective factors in that. Um, we also know that they're important to healing and recovery and that um, they're very important in terms of um, preventing relapse. So relationships are incredibly important and the church is in a position to, um, if it takes it seriously, to learn how to offer the kinds of relationships that support. We're not talking about becoming mental health providers. Right, we're right. About, we're talking about knowing how to respond when someone is in crisis or in pain. Um, we're talking about knowing how to walk alongside when people are experiencing a struggle, um, how to support loved ones and family members. Mm -hmm. So, and the church is very is very able um, to do that. So that's that's why I think the church is involved <laughs> because there's this incredible opportunity to make a huge difference. Right, right, and obviously it was something that the General Assembly felt so called to do um, that there was such huge support for it. So, and I think, wow, what a perfect time um, to be really supporting this ministry. If, if people want to get involved, how would you recommend they do so? Right. Well, first of all, I would like to say thank you to all of you who um, have supported um, 
the work of the Presbyterian Mission Agency, which of course is what, where this work is located um, with your giving. So that's one way, obviously. Um, but beyond that, I suppose what I think one of the most um, important um, ways is to learn more about it. Mm -hmm. And there are lots of resources um, available online at our website. So I would really encourage anyone interested to go to the website, to look around, to consider signing up for the network so that you will be on their mailing list and also receive updates um, when they go out from my office. Um, and also, um, I think, I think maybe another really important thing is to sort of think about your own community and prayerfully consider, um, you know, what is the culture around mental health in my community? Mm -hmm. And do we, how, how do we respond when people are in crisis or pain? Do we, are we ready? Do we know how to do that? Um, and also, do we have a structure? Do we have ways to um, safely and appropriately walk alongside um, people? you know, when they're struggling and also um, family members. And um, so I would, I guess those, those are the things think about your own community, go to the website. And obviously, um, thank you for the giving um, that makes this work possible. Well, we will absolutely put the, the website down here um, so that people can, can easily access information, sign up for uh, newsletters and get resources. Donna, thank you so much for your time and for sharing the work of this ministry. It is such a blessing to be able to share this space with you and share this work with the rest of the church. Thank you, Lauren, and with you. Thank you.